Hi everybody, Phil from Hybrid Me talking into a mirror. Why am I talking into a mirror? Well, I'm doing a video today on secondary displays. In 2021, I'm going to revisit all of the topics around mats, impact screens, PCs, projectors, software, launch monitors. But right now, we're just going to cover secondary displays, monitors, TVs. What do you need to, need to consider when you're building a golf sim? Now, if you're starting out and you've got limited space, maybe limited money, and you're not wanting a full enclosure and everything, you may just get yourself a SkyTrack, a Mevo Plus, a, a GC to um, or more expensive systems and just run an app on your iOS or Android phone or, or your tablet that'll just be able to display the data. Things like the Foresight Fitting app for GC2, it could be the Flight Scope Companion app for Mevo Plus, or you can play limited courses on things like E6 Connect using um, iOS and you're not going to be spending money on a projector or a premium impact screen. You're just going to need a practice net, maybe an archery net that you can hang, which is what I've got behind here that are cheaper and you don't have to worry about getting them all neatly fitted because it's just going to be hanging and catching the ball. And that's a good way of getting started. And if you happen to have a gaming PC, it could be a tower system with a uh, monitor or it might be a gaming laptop, then you can run the full versions of the PC software, things like GS Pro, which I'm showing here, or it could be something like E6 Connect or FSX or TGC19 or... Um, Trackman Virtual Golf or, or whatever. It could be any of the any third party software. Now, if you end up going down the full enclosure route, then I think you're going to want some additional components. You're going to have the impact screen, which is good, but if you want to kind of only have that, you're going to end up getting some kind of Bluetooth keyboard on a shelf or on a table, or possibly one of the little portable ones. I mean, there's quite a few different form factors. Um, I use this when I'm doing uh, racing in the racing uh, cockpits there. Um, but they're a little bit fiddly. And if I turn this off and on, and while I'm doing it, it's hard one-handed, but aim from the screen, aim to the left, then click the little button. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's doable. Um, I would suggest it's much nicer to have an additional laptop at the side that you can use that can do all of that. Now, this isn't a laptop. This is just an IS Pro, an IS Pro, iPad Pro, sitting in a magic keyboard setup which could just be an ipad stand for the sake of this video um, and i'm going to show you how you can use the ipad as a secondary touchscreen display should you not want to have a big touchscreen display or possibly larger monitors and you happen to have an ipad hanging around i'll do that very shortly but when you do and set up an additional display you need to decide do you want to use it for different apps so this this is extending the display so it's creating an additional display and i can run any apps i want to on that display so it might be that i'm just want to watch some tv or watch sports on this additional monitor while i play golf or it might be that actually i want to show ball data and club data which i've got here so i can actually hit my shots on the simulation software and on my secondary screen i can see the ball data um, or it could be that um, you could run anything there at the side but if you've got a third monitor which is ideal then I would recommend this, in my case, is my third display. It could be wall mounted over here or over here. This is effectively my secondary display. It's the one that's going to mirror the front. And this is what I normally do with my 27 inch touchscreen monitor here. And I'm going to show you how it can be done with the iPad now. But before I do, you just have a consideration that if you're going to mirror a display, it is going to be mirroring the resolution and mirroring the aspect ratio. So do bear that in mind. So this is a 16 by 9 4K image being put out from that projector. And I mirror it to a full HD 1080p touchscreen monitor. So as standard, that resolution would actually be shunted down to 1080p and I wouldn't be getting the full resolution I get from the projector. Now, there are some things you can do and you can look up online where you can create a custom resolution um, in the NVIDIA settings, which I've done for this monitor. So effectively, it's, I think it's pretending to be a 4K, um, 4K resolution monitor. And it means that I can actually mirror it and retain the 4K image on my screen. But as standard, it wouldn't work that way. But the cool thing is, there is an app that you can actually run on iOS. Uh, there's probably a few apps, but I'm just gonna show you the one that I've used today which is Duet Display. There is also Duet Air. Um, you can plug it in directly using the cable, um, using a cable and plugging it directly into your PC and it work wirelessly and that's probably easier for most people, but you can also use the Duet Air, which I, I paid for, um, so that I can wirelessly um, mirror the screen to the iPad Pro. Now you, you need to purchase that and run that on the PC 
you need to go off to doitdisplay.com and it will give you a link on the app where you then run the companion app for Windows or for Mac. Um, obviously, I'm yet to find a Mac, a bit of comprehensive SIM software that works well on Mac, so therefore it's gonna be a Windows PC. And you can select that when you're on there to being air mode, so it's gonna be wireless. Then you run the app, which in my case is actually Do It Air. It is Do It Display, but there's another one you can look it up. Um, don't worry about the connection going. That then gives me the option to either have it wired or wireless. I can choose do I want to mirror or extend. Because I'm extending this monitor, I'm gonna to choose to mirror this one. That's gonna to connect to the desktop PC and let me select the display. I'm gonna select the 4K display. The cool thing about using this app is it will actually adjust the resolution within the app, um, not forcing the 4K projection screen down to uh, the resolution here. So you'll see in a few moments that it will be displaying the secondary reader screen, there we go. And the cool thing about the whole thing is, it's now touch screen. So I can select my aims. It takes a second or two to kind of catch up actually. I noticed that when I did this before. But I can now select my aim by just clicking on the screen. I've got low battery warning. Or I can go over to the map and just think, actually I want to aim way over there. No, I don't, I want to aim at the middle there, about there. And I can see the carry distance, 2.30 to go and I could then hit my shot. Um, and it becomes a full secondary touchscreen monitor. And it means that um, I could just take that back in at the end of the day. And the only thing that's staying out in the sim is the projector. So anyone that is carrying stuff in and out of outbuildings, taking stuff on the road with them, it's an ideal way of adding a second, third, possibly a fourth monitor if you happen to have an iOS screen hanging around. Um, I think I've covered everything. I'll probably realise I've completely forgot to cover some topics, but I hope that's been helpful. Um, I can happily go into more detail, fire away with, away with questions. If this is useful, please share it out there and say, whoa, this guy's good. Do all the likey stuff, because I don't have many subscribers. I'm only poor down at the low level number of subscribers, and I want more. Um, get greedy like that, and do whatever else. Like videos, dislike it if you don't like it, and tell me why. Um, happy New Year to you all. Uh, more videos to follow. Goodbye.